What's up my friends, welcome back. So let me explain today's project. You see, I've already made a lot of projects that use this Unref 24 radio module. And I've already built a lot of Arduino based radio controller as you can see here. But I never explained only how to build the radio controller, because it was always part from a bigger project, as my Arduino based drone, the radio tank here, or the Spitfire plane. So a lot of you guys had some problems establishing the connection between the two modules or understanding the code. So today I will make a tutorial on only how to build the radio controller. So this project will have two parts. First we will build the transmitter and then the receiver, which will be as any other commercial receiver with some PWM outputs. I haven't tested the range of this project yet, but I did with my other projects which are more than the same and I had a good signal up to 700 meters. Well guys, before we start I would like to ask you to visit my Q&A page, but not only to post a question, but also to help others out. You see, I don't have time to answer all of your questions, and sometimes I don't know the answer, so please join the community and help others out. The link is down below. Also guys, I would really appreciate if you support my projects on my Patreon page. Usually I post my videos there one day earlier, and also my design parts, all my schematics and so on. So please visit my Patreon page, I would really appreciate that guys. So let's begin this project, let's see how to establish the connection between the transmitter and receiver, how these little modules, this unref 24 module works and so on. So let's get started. This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the GLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. Here I have my 8010 radio controller. It has 12 channels and is compatible with both these two receivers. One has a PWM and SBUS signals and the other one has PWM, SBUS but also PPM and that's exactly what we will build today. We will build the radio transmitter and then talk about two types of receivers, PWM and PPM signal. So let's begin. So first let's build the transmitter, because it will be the same for both type of receivers. In one of my past tutorials I've used an old already made radio controller and hack it with an Arduino inside. But in order to not confuse you guys too much, I will build today's project using simple separated parts. Here is what we need. First a big drill PCB to solder everything on it. I want two joysticks, each with two channels, so I will use these small joysticks that I've bought from eBay for very cheap. I want my controller to have two more channels and I will make those digital channels, so I will use these toggle switches that will send a 0 or a 1. Finally, I add an extra analog channel using a normal potentiometer. Of course, we will need the Anorev 24 radio module. For the transmitter you should use a power amplified one so we will have more range. You see, the transmitter needs a powerful radio module, but the receiver should work ok with a normal one as well. If the signal gets to it, it should work just fine. Of course, you could use power amplified radio modules for both the transmitter and receiver, but that would increase the price a bit. Now a very important part of this project is a good voltage regulator. You see, the Arduino works at 5 volts but the Anorev 24 module at 3.3. If we supply 5 volts to the radio module, we will burn it. So I will use the Arduino Nano, which already has a 3.3 volts output, but is not powerful enough, it can supply enough current. For that I will use the AMS 1117 3.3 volts voltage regulator. Finally, to supply the circuit, we could use a LiPo battery or maybe directly a 9V battery like this one, but it won't last as much as the LiPo. Check the part list below to see all the extra small components. This is the schematic of the radio transmitter. Have it in front of you while soldering and make sure you follow well all the connections. I take the piece of drill PCB and I first solder in place the joysticks. 
They have these thick metal pins, so you would probably have to enlarge 4 holes for each one, in order to fit them in. Next I soldered the radio transmitter module in the top center position of the board, so it won't have too much interference. Now a very important step is to solder the Arduino quite close to the radio module. You see, the longer are the wires or the PCB connections from the Arduino to the module, the higher the noise will be. So make sure you have very short connections. And if you use free wires to connect the SPI pins, you could also twist ground around MOSI and MISO wires, in order to lower the noise a bit. That helped me in certain situations. Next, I add the two toggle switches, one on each side, and those will be the two digital channels, and finally the extra potentiometer, that will be an analog channel. To power on and off the board, I've added this kind of sliding switch. The battery will be connected to this switch, so when we slide it, the entire board will be supplied. Finally, I solder the 3.3 voltage regulator, with the coupling capacitors and make all the connection, as in the schematic. Those connections include supplied 5 volts and ground to the joysticks, to the switches and the potentiometer. Connect 3.3 volts to the UNREF24 module, make the SPI connection by soldering the clock, MOSI and MISO, but also chip select and chip enable, and finally solder each analog output from the joystick potentiometers. Remember to solder the wires from the battery to the sliding switch. Also very important, make sure that all the voltages are correct. You should have exactly 3.3 volts for the radio module and 5 volts to the Arduino. Now the board is ready. All is there to do is to program it. If you want a better looking board, feel free to download my design from below of this board. You have the Gerber files in a zip below. Just download it and send it to GLC PCB and order your board for a very low price and give your project this professional look and also with a gyro control so you could move the radio control device just by moving the controller. Check the description for more. Well, we have the transmitter, now let's build a receiver. That should be quite easy. All we need is the Arduino Nano, the UNREF24 receiver like this one, another 3.3 voltage regulator and a small PCB. We will use this schematic. In the description you will see two schematics for the receiver. They are more than the same but one has 7 PWM outputs and the other one only 1 PPM output on digital pin 2. Depending on the project that you want, use one or another. Ok, so I've soldered everything in place. The Arduino with female pins so I could take it out when I want, the radio module and make the connection just as in the schematic. I soldered the AMS 3.3 voltage regulator and remember to add a 10 microfarad and 100 nanofarad capacitor to smooth the 3.3 voltage. The receiver won't need a battery supply, since just as any other commercial receiver, it will be supplied with directly 5 volts, as you could see here on this receiver, we have ground, 5 volts and signal. Now as you can see, this commercial receiver has 90 degrees pins for each channel. I don't have that now, so I will use normal straight PCB pins. You have to solder 3 pins for each channel, ground, 5 volts and signal. This kind of radio connection could have up to 32 channels, which is the maximum supported by the UNREF24 module, but the Arduino doesn't have that much digital pins. In my case I only have 7 channels. Now we are ready to program both the transmitter and receiver. This is the part where most of you guys had some problems, since you weren't able to receive data. So for that, before let's make a quick test. To keep it simple, on the breadboard connect the transmitter and the Arduino, with only one potentiometer connected to analog pin A0. Use this example schematic for that. Make sure that the SPA connection is as in the schematic. You could also wind ground around MOSI and MISO wires for less noise. Also add a small capacitor between ground and 3.3 volts. Now on another breadboard make the same configuration, but in this case without the potentiometer since this will be the receiver. Now download the transmitter and receiver test codes from below. Make sure they are the test codes, not the final code of the project. Now open Arduino IDE two times and open the transmitter code in one and the receiver in the other. 
upload the codes and then go to the serial monitor of the receiver part and open it. Set the baud rate to 9600 and you should receive the data for channel 1. Move the potentiometer and the data should change according to the potentiometer. If there is no good connection, the data will always be the same even if you move the potentiometer. If you receive data, then your connection is working. So guys, we can program our radio controller. Now download the transmitter and receiver codes. Be careful, there are two receiver codes, one for PWM and the other for PPM. I will use PWM for now. This is the transmitter code. Let me explain it step by step. First, we import the libraries that we need. Make sure you have the Anorav24 library installed. If not, you could download it from below. Then go to Sketch, Include Library and Add that zip library and select the zip file that you have just downloaded. And now we are good to go. You could also use the library manager to install it. Next, we define the radio pipe. This code should be the same in the transmitter and receiver, since it is a unique code for the radio connection. Having multiple receivers with the same pipe code, they will all receive the same data from the transmitter. Next, we define the chip select and chip enable pins for the SPA communication. These two could be any digital pin of the Arduino, in my case are pin 9 and 10. The other SPA pins must be digital pin 11, 12 and 13, since those are the clock, MOSI and MISO ports of the Arduino and they can be other pins. Now, we create a structure type variable and store each channel value in this structure. This could have up to 32 channels, each of 8 bits, or better said 1 byte. I name each channel from channel 1 to 7. Now we create a variable with that structure and name it send data, and this will be the package that we will send. Ok, in the setup void we begin the radio communication using the begin function that the Anorav24 library already has. We set the radio communication configuration and open the radio pipe with the variable my radio pipe defined before. The next lines will reset the channel values. In this case, all four potentiometers of the joysticks will be in the middle position. Since we can only send 8 bits per channel, which in decimal is 255, well, the middle of 255 will be 107. That's why I reset channel 1 to 4 with these values. Next, we have two digital channels, channel 5 and 6, with value 0 or 1, and finally another analog channel but with value 0, since this will be connected to a potentiometer that will have its initial position to 0. In the void loop we have to read each analog and digital inputs, which in this case are analog pins A0 to A4 and digital pins D2 and D3. We map these values to a range between 0 and 255, since we can only send 8 bits, and store the values in our send data variable, and we send the entire structure using the radio.write function. Ok, so the transmitter code was very simple. Now let's take a look on the receiver side. It is a bit longer, but that's because each line is repeating for each channel. Once again, import the needed libraries. In this case, we import servo library as well, for the PWM signals. Define the pipe as in the transmitter code, and the chip select and enable pins. Again, we create 7 byte structure for the receive values. Now, we create 7 servo types, and define the PWM initial value for each channel. In the setup loop, we attach the PWM signals to pins from digital D2 to D8. And finally, we configure the radio connection and start listening. Next, we have this function called receive data. This function will receive the data and store it in our structure. Now in the void loop, we use this receive data and get the values. Right below, we map the receive values from 8 bits to a value from 1000 to 2000 microseconds since those are usually the values that any commercial radio receiver use for PWM signal. Using the right microsecond function, we create each of the 7 PWM signals and we are done. Now connect the USB and upload these codes to the transmitter and receiver. I connect the battery to the transmitter and power it on. Supply 5 volts to the receiver with the USB and I will connect two of its channels to my oscilloscope and there you go. I perfectly received the data from the transmitter. 
if the values are not exactly in the correct range, which is from 1000 to 2000 microseconds, then go to the receiver code and change these values here, in order to match the minimum and maximum values for each channel. So there you go my friends. We have built our own radio control that works exactly as any other commercial one, but for way less money. In the description you also have the code and schematic for a PPM receiver, that will create an 8 channel PPM signal on digital pin 2. The rest of the project is the same. We have 2 digital channels with switches, 4 channels for the joysticks and 1 extra potentiometer for channel 7. What is left to do is probably 3D print a case for this project. Or maybe leave it like this, so it should have a more DIY look. Remember that below you have the Gerber files for this transmitter board, if you want to send it to JLCPCB and print it. This board has 4 analog channels with these 2 joysticks, and 2 more digital channels with some sliding switches here. You could also add a gyro module and send that data and control the RC machines only by moving the controller, but that is for a future project so stay tuned. Well guys, you have all the codes and schematics below in the video description, and also my Patreon page. Check my webpage electronoops.com for more details, and if you would like to support me, check my Patreon page as well. I would really appreciate that guys, it will help me a lot and I will have more and more awesome projects. I hope that you enjoyed this video, if so don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.